I bring you greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I woke up this morning with this heavy burden in my heart, inspired by the Holy Spirit, and um, was instructed to share this message with each and every one of us. So I will want you to open your heart and receive this word of God that is about to come to you with an open heart. Receive it so that you can be blessed by the word. I woke up with the heavy burden of the Holy Spirit asking me to talk about we as the body of Christ need to re-examine ourselves. We need to re-examine ourselves. We need to re-examine our practices. We need to re-examine the things that we are doing. If the things we are doing, the lifestyle we are living, the things we are practicing are actually pointing to our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, let me tell you, when you're born again or when they come to preach to you and tell you that give your life to Christ, once you give your life to Christ, your whole problem will be solved. You don't have to suffer any challenge. You don't have to go through any problem. It is not true. Being born again does not stop you as a child of God from facing challenges. Being born again does not stop you from going through turbulence in life. Being born again does not mean you are not going to face challenges. You are not going to face trouble. You are not going to face enemies. No. That is not it. But being born again means that you have been empowered to overcome. You have been empowered to conquer. You have been empowered by the Holy Spirit to be able to overcome whatever challenges, whatever storms of life that is presented to you. That is what it means. Because I've come in contact with people that say they told me once I'm born again, I'm not going to face any trouble. I'm not going to face any challenge. I'm not going to face any difficulty. But that is not the case. I am born again. I've given my life to Jesus. But yet I'm still going through challenges. I'm still facing one trouble or the other. Being born again means you have God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit by your side. You have the backing of God. You have the backing of heaven. Any challenges that you are faced with, that you are confronted with, you are sure that when you have a relationship with God, that when you kneel down, you pray, you call upon God, it's going to give you the ideas, it's going to give you the strategy, it's going to help you to overcome every challenge that life might present before you. It's going to help you to overcome every turbulence of your life. That is what it means to be born again. But today we see people that say they are born again, but the kind of lifestyle they live does not reflect God, does not reflect the characteristics of God. When you are born again, you are, you, you are supposed to reflect the nature of God. You are supposed to reflect the character of God. Everything about your life. Life is now you are not living for Jesus, you are not living to please Him, you are now striving to live a lifestyle that will conform to the word of God and to the dictates of the Holy Spirit. You now align yourself, you align your spirit, your soul, and your body to walk in the plan and in the purpose of God for you. Now, I will want you to hear this there is no church in heaven. If you don't know it, know it today. Whatever church you are going to, church A, church B, church Z, whatever the name of the denomination you belong to is, Note that there is no signboard in heaven that shows the congregation that goes to this church, all of you be this way. No, we are one in Christ. We are one in Christ. So let us stop fighting each other. Let us stop turning the house of God, the church of God, to a theater of war where battles are being exchanged here and there. God is not happy with this behavior. God is not happy with these practices that is being seen in the body of Christ today. We are going to read a scripture to help us understand this better. The Bible in Romans chapter 12. I will start reading from verse 3. What does the Bible say in Romans 12 verse 3? 
For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, we so we being many are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another, having many different having gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, where we prophecy let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith what is the scripture explaining to us here though we are many though we come from different race we come from different countries we come from different tribes but remember we are one in christ so my dear brother stop fighting me i'm not your problem my dear sister, stop fighting your fellow sister in the body of Christ. She is not your problem. We have a common enemy, which is the devil. Instead of the body of Christ for us to join forces together to fight the devil, we have left the devil to begin to fight each other. You are fighting me. The other brother is fighting the other person. We are busy fighting ourselves in the body of Christ. And God is not happy with this kind of practices that is going on in the body of Christ. Stop the fighting. We are one body. It doesn't matter the church you go to. It doesn't matter the, the denomination you belong to. If you are a born again child of God, if you are a Christian, we are one in Christ. We are one in Christ, irrespective of the church you go to, irrespective of the tribe you speak, irrespective of the country you come from. In Christ Jesus, we are one. So it's high time we stop depopulating the kingdom of God by the practices we are doing, by the things we are doing, by the lifestyle we are living that is not reflecting Christ. And let's have a change of heart. Change. The nature of Christ is love. It was love. The Bible said, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. While we were yet sinners, the nature of Jesus is love. We need love in the body of Christ. Show love to everyone that is a child of God. Show love to your neighbor. Show love to your family members. Stop the fighting in the body of Christ. Stop it. God is not happy. The Spirit of God is not happy with this kind of practices that is taking place in the body of Christ today. Why should you, a preacher of the gospel, you come to pull down another preacher of the gospel. Remember when you read down, the Bible says we have different gifts. The gifts that God has given to us is for the edification of the body of Christ. It's not for you to be bragging. I can do miracles. I can raise the dead. I can open blind eyes. No. The gift God has given to you is for the lifting of the body. It's not for castigation. It's not for you to brag and prove who you are and prove how powerful a preacher you are and prove the thousands and millions of congregation that you have. It is the gift and the calling of God it is for you to use it to draw souls to the kingdom. Stop this practice of pulling down people in the, in the body of Christ. Stop it. Stop it. God is not happy with your behavior. God is not happy with your character of pulling down the body, of destroying the body, of scattering his body. Today we see everywhere pastors fighting pastors, members fighting members. 
We are supposed to be doing the work of God, teaching the word of God, emulating the nature of God, the nature of Christ. But what are we seeing today from the pulpit? We have turned the house of God, the church of God, the body of God to a, a, a wrestling ring where we come to flex muscles. Remember that the, the, the battles we are fighting are spiritual. They are not physical. Fellow ministers, stop the act of fighting, castigating, pulling down other fellow ministers. It is not edifying. It is not helping the body of Christ. It is not helping the church to grow. Rather, we are scattering the church. The Bible in John chapter 21, starting reading from verse 15 to 17, and Jesus asked Simon Peter, Peter, do you love me? And he said, Master, you know I love you. And he said, feed my sheep. He asked him a second time and asked him a third time. The heart of Simon was grieved, but Jesus was asking this question for the purpose of emphasis. Feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. You are a preacher. Why have you failed to feed the sheep that God has placed under you? Why have you failed to teach them the truth of the undiluted word of God? Why have you failed to teach them the virtues, the principles of the word of God, the principles of Jesus? Why have you failed to teach them love? Why have you failed to teach them patience? Why have you failed to teach them endurance? Why have you failed to teach them honesty? Why have you failed to teach them integrity? Yet people are in the church. They are haters. They hate their fellow members. Today in the body of Christ in the church, we see people. Now the thing that have taken place right now is that we now have demons as leaders in the church of God. Occultic men and women becoming heads and leaders in the church of God. Because we have driven the Holy Spirit out of the church. We have sent God away from the church. And now we are not doing what we like. We are practicing what we like. We are introducing doctrines that are not helping the body to grow, but are destroying the body of Christ. And the Lord has sent me to deliver this message to you. If you will come across this message, take your time to listen to this message. Because it, this is coming as a warning signal to each and every one that stands on the pulpit to preach the word of God. Teach the people the word of God. Teach them to love, to love their neighbors. Teach them what it means to suffer long suffering. Teach them what it means to be patient when God is taking them through a process in their life. Teach them what it means, the virtue of patience, the virtue of tolerance. The virtue of mercy. Teach them forgiveness. Today in the church, we see a lot of people coming bitterness, grudges, unforgiveness. Yet, we have preachers everywhere, in every street. You have churches literally everywhere. But yet, we are not making the necessary impacts that we need to make in our generation. And I'm a voice that the Lord is using this hour. To speak to our consciences. Return back to what God has called you to do. Remember that the message is Jesus, not you. Oh man of God, oh woman of God. Don't climb the pulpit of the Lord and begin to speak eloquently. Tell us about your qualification. Tell us about the properties you have possessed. That is not what God is interested in. You are not discipling the people of God. You are not teaching them the word of God. And that is why they will call a member in your church. Recite one scripture. They cannot recite a single scripture. Even John 3.16, they cannot recite it. Psalms 23, they cannot recite it. Why? Because you are not discipling them. You are not teaching them the word of God that they need to know. You are not letting them understand that life is a process. 
And when God is taking you through that process, you need to be patient with God. You need to go through endurance. You need to go through long suffering before you begin to enjoy the blessings of God. But what we see in church today is that shout hallelujah. As you go out, there is a new house waiting for you. As you go out, there is a new car waiting for you. From where? As you go back home today, money will enter your bank account. You will get miracle alerts. Those things are beautiful. But teach them to know the virtues of Christianity, the virtues, the principles of the word of God. That is what we need to know. And that is why today some of people coming to God, to know God for themselves, they are now knowing and celebrating pastors as idols. It is good to celebrate your minister, but most of the preachers today have idolized themselves in the house of God. You are not pointing the people to Jesus. You are pointing to them, you are pointing yourself to them. You are not the Messiah. You are not the one that died on the cross of Calvary for their sins. Point them to the cross. Point them to Jesus. Jesus is the one that should be preached, not you. Jesus is the one that they should be directed to. If God has used you to perform any kind of miracle, that does not mean you are not a superman. That does not mean you are not an assistant God or assistant Jesus or deputy Jesus. No, he only used you to glorify himself, to show forth his power and his works. Stop idolizing yourself. You have made yourself an idol in the house of God. That the people now in your congregation now worship you instead of worshiping God. They now celebrate you more than they celebrate their maker. It's not about you. Everything you say is about you. It's about how powerful you are. It's about how God is using you. It's about the thousands and millions of congregations that you have. God is not happy. Jesus is not happy. The Holy Spirit is not happy. Because the gospel of Jesus is about Jesus. It's about Christ himself. It's not about you. Direct the people to God. Teach them how to kneel down and pray. Teach them how to kneel down, to bow down, to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And not to worship you. Today we see members worshiping their pastors. Some crawl to greet their pastors. Some kneel to worship to greet their pastors. Some even lie down. Practices that they don't do. They have never knelt down to celebrate God that gave them life. They have never lied down, roll on the altar to return glory to God. Stop idolizing yourself. The person we are celebrating is the person of Jesus. The message that should come from the altar should be all about Jesus. Should be teaching people the principles of Jesus. It is to disciple people to stay in course with Jesus. It's not about you. The message is not about you. It's not about celebrating all the degrees you have acquired. It's not about celebrating how well you can speak, how well you can preach. It's about Jesus. I think we have to return and retrace our steps and let our focus be on Christ. Let our focus be on Christ. O oh, ye man of God, teach your congregation to love. Let this hatred in the body of Christ stop. Let it stop. Let it stop. God is not happy about it. God is not happy about it. God is not happy about it that his body has been torn into pieces. His body has been torn with hatred, with bitterness, with unforgiveness. Now the nature of Christ is forgiveness. Teach your members to forgive. Teach them to love. Teach them to share. And that is why you will come to, you, you are bragging and saying how many fleets of cars you have, how many properties you have, and yet the pastors that God has placed under you to work under you are starving. Some pastors working in some ministries cannot pay their house rent. Some cannot feed their families. But the father GOs, they are busy riding big cars, having jets, owning properties here and there. But those that are called to work with you in the Lord's vineyard, they cannot afford a proper meal. 
Some of them, their children are sent out because they cannot pay their children's school fees. And that is why, because of the maltreatment, everybody today wants to be a GO. Everybody wants to be a founder of a ministry. It's high time we retrace our step back and look inward. Look inward. If God has blessed you with a spiritual gift, those that don't have that kind of gift, don't come bragging to them and pulling them down and saying that they have 15 members, they have 10 members, and you have millions of members. Those millions of members you have, are you, have you trained them? Have you taught them the word of God? Have you, I mean, discipled them for heaven? Or they are members that are on their way to hell? How comes you are still standing preaching, yet you have prostitutes, those that are into smoking, drinking, every, everywhere in your church? And yet, you are busy fighting other ministers. I think it's high time we retrace our step back. Let's go back to God on the altar of prayers. Ask God to forgive you. One thing that I fear most is the judgment that will come upon ministers. I'm a minister of the gospel of Christ. And I'm very careful with what I'm saying. To be a bad shepherd comes with a lot of consequences. I want you to take your time to read the Bible in Ezekiel chapter 34. Read Acts chapter 20 verse 23. Read Jeremiah 28, Isaiah 56 verse 11. Ezekiel 34 3 and 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 2. Talks about bad shepherd. To turn away from their evil ways. Bad shepherds that are misleading the flocks. Instead of teaching the flocks the principles of God. Instead of directing the flocks to the cross. To that old rugged cross where Christ was nailed. You are teaching them your own doctrine. And your own principles. And your own ways. I pray that the Lord will have mercy. I'm only a messenger of God. And as he has ordered me I have spoken. I have delivered this message so that it will be well with me. If you have heard this message, please and please stop fighting your fellow believers. I am not responsible for what you're going through. We have one common enemy, and that enemy is the devil. The Bible says that the house divided against itself cannot stand. When the body of Christ is divided against itself, as we are seeing today, our spiritual fathers fighting themselves, in public domain, everywhere, instigating their members here and there. It's not helping the body to grow. And God is not happy. He's going to ask you a question. He's going to ask you, what values did you teach the sheep that he handed over to you? Were you just milking the sheep for your own selfish gain? Or were you actually teaching them what Christ said to Peter, feed my sheep. Teach them my word. Teach them the principle of my word. Teach them my virtues. Teach them to, to, to live their life according to the standard and the dictates of my word. I pray that God will help his church. That his church will be more bonded. His church will be more united. His church will actually lead the congregation to heaven. As we do, God will help his church. And the gates of hell will never prevail against the church of God. In the name of Jesus, Shalom.